So welcome to this short intro and overview over the BioVoxel 3D box, a GPU accelerated image analysis um, toolbox. Some of you might know the BioVoxel toolbox, which is existing already since 2013. And um, usage statistics have shown that quite some people are actually actively using it. Um, so why reinventing the wheel? Actually, I would say improving the wheel because the old toolbox has some clear limitations, which is it's only all the methods are just applicable to 2D images and in some cases to specific bit depth only. They are very slow for um, very big images and um, it's a collection of very independent and diverse methods. And I simply wanted to create something which can be used as a combinable set of tools um, and that is where the 3D box comes into the game. So you see here on top in the standard menu, it has some analysis functions, some image filtering functions, um, label processings, um, since in this case, it's um, especially label based while the old toolbox wa was more um, thresholding and binary image based. And it has some segmentation um, functions in addition, as well as some tools working or converting labels to um, individual ROIs. Um, I would like to uh, concentrate today on the Voronoi Threshold Labeler because this is really a new tool. The other ones are rewritings um, to transfer that to a GPU-based um, processing and make them accessible for 3D images as well. Um, that makes all of this interesting, but due to the short time, here an intro into the Voronoi Threshold Labeler. So what is this tool? It should be a compact 3D segmentation pipeline. Um, and at the moment it contains seven different image filter methods, five different background subtraction options, the standard well-known 17 auto thresholds currently implemented in ImageJ. Um, global ones, so the local ones are not yet included. And it has six partially very no um, object splitting methods or label splitting um, op options. As you see below, it has three different types of outputs. You can either create labels, you can create binary images as usual, and you can create outlines on top of the image, especially during the tool usage for a cross-checking how good your segmentation at the moment is. Um, dependent on the parameter settings, we can actually manage to extract quite some different types of objects. You see on the left-hand side, we could extract um, with certain parameters the small, rather isotropic points. We can extract the bigger in cyan shown, um, slightly more amorphous, um, in this case, nuclear objects, or completely different on the right hand side, extraction of some kind of tubular or network like structures is also possible with one and the same tool. Um, it also performs extremely well in very dense environments. Um, so we see here that it can separate objects where, for example, standard uh, methods like the watershed will have some difficult times in some situations. This is this label splitting is actually um, in the toolbox as a separate tool and can be applied to already extracted binary objects or is part of the Voronoi threshold label. So what is the difference to other tools? Um, the separation works especially well because um, dependent on the method, um, one inverted tubeness filter is used. So a Hessian based tubeness uh, detection is run. Um, these tubeness structures are then subtracted from the original image and similar to an Ansha mask. Um, this will actually carve out the objects a little bit more specifically and therefore enable better detection on the one hand but also enable a better separation of those objects from each other um, on the other. Um, so the typical problem we see in watershed separations that we have, especially for irregular shaped objects that we get typical over fragmentations um, that can be partially avoided with this and other tools based on seeds like Maxima used as seeds. Um, they might also have some disadvantage because if you have objects of different sizes, the distance of the seat to the outside of the object is different dependent on the object. 
And that can quickly lead to the issue you see on the right hand side where we have some bleeding into the neighboring object and we wouldn't get the correct separation position. Therefore, in this um, toolbox, there is a erosion based or two erosion based methods included. So the extracted objects, no matter if two or 3D, are actually eroded in either a sphere or a box environment. Um, that creates here in red displays these kind of seed objects. Um, due to the nature of the erosion, they still have some information about the original shape and size of the object. And from those seeds, then the Voronoi um, separation is done on those ones. In most cases, this works quite well, especially for bigger objects. But we see also here that um, dependent on the erosion amount, we might create some small fragments or down here for these boxes, which also might lead to some um, unwanted separations. Therefore, one additional method was added, and this is um, a difference of Gaussian based um, separation. So a DOG filter is run on the extracted objects that um, leads then to some kind of homo more homogeneous or smooth outlined seeds. Those seed regions are then thresholded and extracted and then taken to actually starting from them to um, fill the Voronoi diagram and um, separate the objects. They do not have so much the problem of some breaking off parts, um, but still consider size of objects and therefore for these kind of irregular structures are quite well suited. Um, since all the methods are GPU based, I also made some speed tests um, out of interest to see how fast it performs. Here you see a comparison to Stardist here run non GPU based. Um, I chose Stardist in this comparison because the image itself has some star convex shape. So I thought it performs quite well while we actually see that um, it because of the different size range. So we have very big and very small objects. In some cases, it might have some trouble in um, detecting them um, perfectly. This is where the Voronoi threshold labeler performed in this situation slightly better. And speed wise, we see that it in that example was around 10 times faster in some 3D examples. Um, I had some uh, speed improvements up to 15 times um, versus other standard thresholding based extraction methods. So and once we have our objects extracted, then it's a matter of taste if you want to continue working with the labels, um, for example, via MorphoLibJ or other tools, or if you want to convert them to ROIS and we have two functions. Um, one thanks to Bram van der Broek, um, which is a script um, reading the labels into the 2D ROI manager. And we can also use the 3D ROI manager from Thomas Boulier and read out those ROIS and then continue on those ones. So to summarize this shortly, um, the whole toolbox contains methods which um, are a um, have experience a speed up in comparison to the old methods, especially because of the CLIJ2 library backend. Um, all of those methods are applicable to 2D as well as 3D um, data without much conversion or calculation needed. Um, it also considers non-isotropic voxels, um, so that might be an advantage. And um, it's a very flexible segmentation pipeline builder, the Voronoi threshold uh, labeler, which enables especially non-programmers or non-experts to combine processing analysis feature with a direct optical feedback and therefore create easier extractions. All of these functions are recordable, so can be transferred in a macro. Java developers have access to the methods. Um, it's all on GitHub. The label based output can be combined with other um, libraries from ImageJ. As you've seen, it performs well of dif for different object sizes, shapes and types. Um, and the new separation methods might be good alternatives to other already existing 2D watershed or seed based methods. Information can be found on the GitHub page uh, mentioned here, as well as the installation instructions. And if there would be any questions, I'm always um, available on the um, forum. So at this point, I would like to thank you for your attention and all those people you see here, especially Robert Hase for the amazing CLIJ2 library. Um, Ram van der Breek, Thomas Boudier for enabling the label reading, Benny Schmidt for the 3D script to be able to reconstruct this here, and obviously Wayne Raspan for 
uh, Image J in the first place and Curtis Rudin and the team um, for all the tireless maintenance and improvement of Fiji and all of you and the community. And I hope also after this talk that uh, we can get into some nice discussions. Thank you.